。喂喂，各位好，我系罗伯 ，and we are going to color a bit today. And、uh, we're gonna color a bit in Photoshop. I did a bit of work ahead of time,、uh, just masking out the interior area, just so that the you know the background can be something that we can use. So then again, holding down Command for Apple to zoom in, and let's just、uh, let's just get to it. And I'm usually used to like、uh, pink. We'll make it kind of pinky, pinkish, pinkish.、Uh, my、uh, mouse, my mouse is acting up a little bit. There we go. That's not a bad color at all. So、uh, here we are, and this image is、uh, a squid on a bass player.、Um, I drew this one a while ago. I'm not sure. Where the、uh, inspiration came from, I do a lot of kind of、um, stream of consciousness drawing. I guess there is some planning.、Uh, planning is important, however, at the same time, not all of it is entirely planned.、Uh, generally speaking, it's kind of what seems interesting to me. So again. I created a, a gray mask by、uh, selecting kind of the interior areas of the、uh, image, and and then just starting to do kind of the base color.、Uh, I enjoy drawing squids and octopuses,、uh, octopi. Because just the planning, I enjoy the planning of the tentacles. Actually, it's very they're very、uh, interesting appendages. I mean, we're we're quite limited with two, mind you. The amount of effort required to maintain、um, to maintain eight is a different story. I think I got everything. So. Let's、uh, kind of keep with this theme of getting, making the eyebrows slightly darker, and then going into the eyeballs. Let's nice. This one seems to be looking down, I believe, and probably because he is assisting this gentleman playing the、uh, to play the. Oops, no,、nope, that's that.、Uh, let's go here. Hansel, and he's assisting with the the playing of the bass. And I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with those little dots, but、uh, no, I'll figure that one out. So. Here we are. I'm just adding just a little bit of detail here. The eye color. Let's make it a nice, nice baby blue, ish. Got a blue-eyed octopus here. And then we can just kind of fill her in here, and then. Make the pupil there. Oops, it's okay. And we can always zoom in just to do a little bit of the the detailed stuff. All right, and then let's get to this this guy right here. Ah,、uh, skin tone. Let's get a little bit of pink, pinkish, yellowish, orangey kind of skin tone. There we go. And you know, let's make this guy just a little bit darker. There we go. And then ears. 
and such. The uh, kind of, you know, putting down the base coat. And I mean, with the power of, you know, digital painting. Oh, I am actually painting right on the gray. Oh, well, that's not a big deal at all. Technically, the gray is really unnecessary. However, um, perhaps later or in another episode, uh, we'll be doing the highlights first in gray and then going in with the color on top. Um, mainly because I, you know, I've read somewhere, I feel that everyone has read something somewhere now, that, uh, you know, practicing doing the lighting and shading on a gray kind of neutral um, background first. And then since, since it really helps, you know, push the, the, the colors out once you get your shading done correctly. And, uh, but right now I'm kind of approaching this from a very rudimentary, uh, as if this was a coloring book and, uh, I'm just kind of coloring as I go. And uh, also, you know, the the truth is, while we do read, and there is a lot of information out there, um, I've kind of gotten to the point where I feel that maybe everything should be taken with a, with a bit of, um, I think the, the, the uh, saying is with a grain of salt, but it's more just being cautious about what we read and the concept of what truth and you know, what we should be doing is there's a lot of people giving advice and you know as human beings we are excellent pattern recognizers so when we see something work we tend to say well you know that's what we should be doing oh no that's supposed to be gray as well all right let me get in there and uh, just kind of fill that's his shirt. That's where his shirt was. There we go. Much better. And anyways, so, uh, you know, while there is a wealth of information out there now, uh, again, you know, whatever works for you, I think, is probably the best thing to do. You know, there are always more than one way to uh, skin cats. <laughs> There's always a saying for something. And there is never anything that is absolute. Um, you know, short of death and taxes. And those things, even then are somewhat um, questionable as considering, you know, we spend a lot of time attempting to thwart death and trying to be more than that. Um, but anyways, feet, let's color these nice feet. And I'm sure, I feel that the shape is off, but uh, it's okay. It'll be okay. Let's see if the coloring kind of saves it. I still haven't figured out how much of a background I'm going to start to include into these images and whether or not I'm going to really be pushing, you know, complex backgrounds or if I should just be keeping it very simple. Um, on that note, you know, just keeping it on a white background really isn't necessary. I could always go textured too. Uh, and the nice thing about digitally painting these things is that you can always create a texture. A textured background is um, quite nice, and they aren't too complicated to to add into things. Oh, getting too close. I'm going to try my best not to go into the pixels because that can be um, it can be a little bit too much. You know, there is the strength of the digital medium, but at the same time. You know, perfection is fleeting at best. We shouldn't try to create the perfect image, but rather just kind of create the perfect moment. 
think that's what it is. These little moments here, you know, as I'm coloring these toenails, makes me think of my own toenails. You know, how often do you cut your toenails? Toenails are very important. They're an odd bit of extraness that we have on us. A bit of maintenance that can be frustrating at times. But, uh, you know, nevertheless, still very important. And let's give him some dark, dark eyebrows, just to kind of make it pop. And, and then, uh, let's, let's make the eyes dark uh, here. They look a little sad. I like the sad eyes, though. Confused. I think that's uh, the look I'm going for. The not quite sure of what you're doing, but at the same time, you are doing it. So your brain is, you know, firing off signals saying that, you know, what you're doing is right. But uh, who knows if that's right or not. All right. And let's... Let's get a little fancy with the shirt. Nice red shirt. Should we stick with the red? Purple? Purple shirt, maybe? An orangey shirt? And there we go. Sure, here's a red shirt. It is a... It's a nice color. I do enjoy red a lot. Um... It is supposed to be a lucky color for Chinese culture. And I grew up with a lot of red around the house. So, you know, um, it's being very superstitious in a way um, by, by upbringing a little... Well, it's interesting how we find... Uh, you know, patterns in what really shouldn't have any kind of pattern whatsoever. Just more keep hitting the wrong button. Let's give him blue pants. Red shirt, blue pants. Nice and simple. Yeah. And here we go. Why do I find the dark blue a little too dark though? It gets lost. And then let's darken this shaded area up. Do the same with the sleeves right here. And now, yeah, maybe this little neckline thing, the collar, you know, where the elasticity is, so that I guess the shirt stays on us. And let's get to this guitar. All right. Let's, you know, well, usually they're dark ish. What color is this guy, anyways? Kind of got reds and purples. Purple's very loud. Let's let's make the the the, the bass, not the guitar, the bass, the dark purple. Yeah. Compliment that uh, that octopus, since it kind of looks like he's the one that's actually playing it, anyways. It seems like he's controlling the guy. And so, here we are. There we go. And there we go. And I think, you know, through this kind of experimentation, I, I, I like putting uh, this up, like prepping a bit of the, the piece first before we begin the coloring. Um, I am, you know, the, the shading out, making sure that everything's kind of set up is, is nice. However, you know, I find that this is the the part where you know I get to kind of relax and talk, and it's quite nice. And I hope others enjoy this as well. We shall see. But as we move on, you know, the day is the day. You know, waking up is is a fascinating thing. It is winter right now, and uh, today, actually, when I woke up. I saw that it was usually, it's usually dark when I wake up. My children wake up quite early, around um, ranging between 6 to 7. And 
you know, uh, especially in the winter, it's very, very dark outside. Hold on. I feel like I got a hair in my eyeball or an eyelash, perhaps. But uh, anyways, it, it was, it's been fairly dark outside. And now, you know, it's kind of depressing when you wake up and it's dark. But, uh, you know, you must wake to accomplish your deeds during the day. But today, when I woke up, it was uh, this kind of haze. It wasn't quite bright yet. I think the sun was definitely up. However, it was uh, a bit foggy and overcast. So it had this kind of, like, orangey-gray tone to everything outside. And it made everything seem very surreal, which was, you know, did not help because I was tired. Uh, And, you know, it just made me feel that... Uh, what's going on, and am I still dreaming? Are these children really awake? But uh, they are. They were up and needing attention and responsibility because if they're hungry, I guess it's up to me. Though, yeah, there is a, a bit of questioning there. I mean, how how resilient are human children? Um, you know, we have survived for quite some time and you know we haven't had all these modern niceties or or um you know luxuries uh cereal you know it's like did you you know what do we wake up to i guess leftovers were probably a big thing whatever was not eaten the night before was probably just left out I can't even imagine the time without refrigerators. I mean, I am, you know, proverbially, proverbially, uh, I got to work on my pronunciation. Pronunciation's hard. Uh, the English language is hard, actually, because uh, there's a lot of, you know, interesting tones and words. But, you know, language in general is... Uh, difficult. A nice, you know, a nice bright red. Oh, let's make it dark, dark red pick. Uh, language is, you know, language, of course, and it really is just a a form of communication. We're just trying to find the most efficient way for me to express what I'm trying to say to you, and that. I think is kind of where a lot of our art comes from. It really is just this way of communicating, you know, feelings or emotions. I mean, even when someone says, I don't know why I drew it, there is some underlying reason, I believe. Maybe we aren't quite aware of it. However, th- there is that was probably this one. It's probably yeah, purple as well. That'll be part of the body, but there is probably some kind of reality to or reasoning to why. But maybe there isn't. Who knows? That's why people tend to always, you know, want to find a reason. Reason why, though, you know, maybe there is no reason. Though that kind of stems from very natural things like why does fire burn because it's a uh, in uh, transitional energy or something where power or energy goes through there's energy is being released in the form of heat I know that much and then uh, and then from there you know, we make fire and then things. So maybe maybe nothing is actually that fated. Everything does happen for a reason. So when someone draws a picture or writes a poem or makes music, uh, <laughs> like with the bass, you know, we learn how to use these instruments that are, you know, complex. But, you know, the patterns... We hear from them, and we find it soothing, or music can be alarming or jarring or offensive. There's definitely music that is offensive, 
Um, and you know, where, where does a lot of that stem from? I really don't have much of an answer to that. All I know is I drew this guy playing bass, um, because I actually, I don't play bass. I played a bit of guitar when I was, uh, younger and I definitely fell out of practice, uh, but playing a musical instrument is quite satisfying and I feel that it is something that a lot of people can relate to and I like I like basses they do set the beat it's such a a subtle it's a subtlety to song and music but it is you know equally important you have a bass track to it it definitely adds a lot of flair and all right, let's get this, let's get this neck, let's get this neck done. I have a nice, nice lightness to it. There we go. And there we go. It's, it's not too bad. Now... Um, I know that there's dots there. Maybe I'll add them. Maybe I won't. The flatness of the image could use some improvement. And I mean, that's where shading and a little bits of detail will come in handy. And I'll definitely be adding those in. But uh, if anybody's out there, <laughs> then uh, you'll probably notice that, you know, I jump all over the place with my thoughts and what's going on. But that's quite normal. I mean, our brains are obsessive, but at the same point, we are capable of multiple tracks of thought. And, you know, even things like regulating my own breathing. Um, I find that fascinating how that we, our bodies are doing so much, and yet we don't really know what's going on. <laughs> All righty. So here we are, nice and colored, and let's create a new layer. Uh, I've been I've been enjoying just kind of doing the. Oops, that was eighty percent. I want fifty, fifty percent, fifty percent, half, and I've been enjoying doing the the color burn for the shading. All right, so let's give it a minute to think on where these things are going to go, where these shadows are. Alrighty, so let's see. Let, uh, well, let's upper right. That seems to be kind of where I was going before. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna play with something here. Let's. Let's drop the hardness so that they're, they're a little bit softer. And then, here we go. With, uh, do I need, no. No, we'll make it blend a little bit more later. But for now, let's get a bit of this shadow. So, you know, underneath here, a little bit of that. And... These, maybe this one's like all in shadow here. The these tentacles are proving to be quite uh, complicated to think about where they would, where the shadows would go. Um, something like that maybe, and then that's kind of that shadow there. And the nice thing with the color burn is that you can just kind of do multiple tracks of shadows. Um, you know what? That's not right. That's not right right there. All right. Let's fix this ear. All right. So maybe a little bit of here and then some here. And then there is definitely that there. And then let's rinse that down there. All right. 
And then we got a shadow going on in here. It's kind of goes a bit. And then that's that. I'm going to have to cough, so excuse me. <laughs> all righty. Well, let's kind of keep that. No, oh, no. Knocking stuff all over my desk. Um, all right. Shadow kind of maybe a little bit there. Definitely something there. That's probably in shadow. Let's keep that sliding through. And then there we go with that. That piece, yeah, yeah, why not? And there's that. And let's do that there. Well, yeah. Give them a little bit of showing right there. And you know, something right there. And then for for the face, let's let's put a little bit of that right there. This is probably definitely all in shadow right here. And these fingers. And, ooh, I have no idea what that was. That was like a burp that kind of crept out. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I hope that didn't offend anybody. I thought it was kind of funny. Not quite laugh out loud funny, though I'm sure my children would think that they that was definitely excellent material. But uh, I apologize. It's funny how we find certain things offensive. Um... I don't I mean it's just to me it's just a bit of gas. That's all. It's just gas in the body. Oh, which one's that there? A little bit of shading there. And let's really get this. And uh, no, no. I don't like what I'm doing there. I'm gonna be doing something wrong there. And alright, let's just kind of Take a step back, get this kind of right. The shadows will come across here. And then and we got this going on here. And then that hand. And there. And I'm, you know what? I might just be adding way too much going on. Maybe I'm just trying too hard. There, There is such a thing as that. Um, you know, just do what you can. And I feel that there's a lot of, uh, you know, desire to provide maximum effort. And do we, we do what we can. However, sometimes doing too much, you know, is at times too much. A little bit of the, just highlights there, this, this area right here. And, uh, all right. Kind of from these dials, these dials would be kind of half in, half in shadow as well. Um, there won't be any shadows here. So maybe if I just kind of do a little uh, stroke down these things, just to show that they're raised, the raised frets, and, and then we'll just kind of give this a little bit of a, a slash, maybe, something like that, and you know, these little Little nibs, the machine heads, that's what they are. Um, drop the opacity to 50. 50, that's more than enough. That's not bad. And then let's go into the highlights. Just make another layer. And this one, all I need to do is just color dodge. 
and let's uh, do a nice big swash of the highlights area. Just a little bit, uh, definitely on the tips of the machine heads, just to kind of on the top of the guitar, make it really shiny. You know, if you have a guitar, you put a good amount of lacquer on it, I believe. So let's just really shine this up. Shine these parts right here. The the pickups, I believe. That's what they're called. Um, it's a little bit smaller. And then let's add a little bit on the skin, just a tad though. Oops, all right, let's get that back. That was 50%. I'm starting to rush a bit, so I need to slow down. Because, here we go. And, yeah. Let's see. No, oh, that's too much. That's too much. Let's just kind of tone that down a bit. Yeah, there we go. All right. I'm gonna put that right there. Yeah. Put a little bit on the foot, a little bit on the toes, not so much over here. And just a little bit right there. A little bit of that shine is nice. Keep hitting the wrong button. That's really frustrating. But uh you know we'll work on it. We'll get better. We get better with every time we do something. Right? So and then uh, back to that this is plain old black and white and let's see how is yeah it's got a little bit of that here to do the frets really make them pop off I mean they they are an integral part of the whole guitar or bass playing stringed instrument you know we push down a string we strum it it makes a tone it vibrates at a specific frequency and we come we become obsessed with the the sound that's really what it is um, just light just light little highlights on the on the octopus and I am definitely using the undo button a lot. And I don't know if that's a, it's a good thing, but you know the undo button is there. You do become dependent on it. And then uh, let's add a little bit of highlights onto the skin right here. Um, just a little bit. Just on the fingers. Oh, that was interesting. So I just kind of, doesn't have to be on the edges. Maybe that's what I'm doing a bit wrong. Doesn't always have to be on the edges. It can be anywhere. You know, just a little, it's a highlight. Oh, I'm finding new things, or maybe I'm just messing up, or finding techniques that I should have known. There's always a bit of self-doubt. Um, that is somewhat required for drawing I don't like that one there there we go all right so drop this down to 50 and then let's let's work on some kind of background here maybe um let's get rid of that let's do a bit of since it looks like he's kind of got a squid We'll do a bit of kind of under the sea, perhaps. A bit of blue. Some greens. Some blue green sea. Get that gradient going. A nice. It's uh, not bad. And then. All right. So let's not. 
let's try our best not to overcomplicate things. So let's just kind of take this out of 50% and let's uh, make another the overlay. No, we don't want to color dodge. Mm, color burn. Yeah, we'll burn it. Let's burn it in. And then let's, let's really make it kind of a hard 90%. Yeah, and then just do a little bit of kind of tapered line squigglies just to kind of give it that little bit of flow. Uh, we don't need a lot. Maybe just one on the top, one on the bottom. Just to kind of break it up. Maybe a thin one up here. Yeah, and then, you know, like, oh, and then, um, no, let's, there we go. And then this whole bottom part, way full. And, do I need to do, you know what, this one, use a bit of, a little bit of more. There we go. I like that kind of tapered line. And then, let's, you know, drop the opacity down again. Just, uh, just a nice subtle background. And there we are. All right. And, uh, all right. And also, I forgot to sign it. Though, I mean, here, here's a interesting thing. I don't know if that's relevant, but if signing a digital painting, I mean, should it still be signed or should it be just, uh, just signed once it's printed? That's a good question. I mean, it's just a layer. I can always get rid of this. But anyways, here we are. So we've colored another picture and uh, was a, it's not as long as a video as the first one. And I think I'm going to stick with kind of eliminating the first bit of shading and, and having the mask all set up. Uh, that kind of kind of grunt work can be waiting for later. Um, and, you know, as we proceed and keep moving on with this, hopefully we'll get better and we'll learn some new things and we'll have some fun. So once again, thanks for watching. Goodbye.